In this lecture, we are going to continue our talk on event-driven programming. Event object. Event object carry the information for the event activities. Event. An event can be defined as a type of signal to the program that something had happened. The event is generated by external user actions such as mouse movement, mouse click, and keystrokes, or by the operation system such as a timer. Before we dive into these event classes, we must know that event-driven programming is a new programming paradigm. It is different from the object-oriented programming or the structural programming. And event-driven programming and the GUI make the swim package so robust. And it is different from the procedural programming used in object-oriented programming or the structural programming that we mentioned in AP Computer Science A or Java Programming Essential course. And right here, we would like to look at the event classes. Event classes are the data classes that carry the event information for each activity that happens in your event-driven programming environment. So the top level is event object, and you have AWT events, and distance selection event, and change event. Change event is something for your variable in your certain object. Sometimes it can be used not in the GUI environment for the change event. And for AWT events, these events are happening in the GUI such as action event, adjustment event, component event, item event, and the text event. And component event is that we usually use something like a get a focus of the mouse or a container, enlarge or shrinking, or you paint something, or you have a window event such as the timer, and input event, you have mouse or key events. And action events are useful button or other component click. And adjustment could be used for those enlargement or shrinking on your painting methods. Event information. An event object contains whatever properties are pertinent to the event. You can identify the source object of the event using the get source instance method. So get source will show you which object or which component got clicked or got moved in the event object class. The subclasses of event object deal with special types of events such as button action, window events, component events, mouse event, and keystroke. A table shown later lists eternal user actions, source objects, and the event type generated. So source object means the button being clicked or being dragged. An event object is for the event information. What kind of event happened? So selected user actions. We have click button, click the checkbox, click the radio button, press return on the text field, select a new item, window open or close, mouse press or release, key release or press. So here are the source object for each of the actions and type of event being generated are this down here. So remember in the listener class, we have the action performed, and there is a parameter action events object E. Those are handling the action events objects. And you can have different handler that handle different event types. So right here, the event type is very important. You need to know what type of event that you got, and then use proper handler to handle it. So right here, remember these different events and find the proper event handler to handle it. Here we have the event delegation model used by JVM. Event-driven processing, we can have different type of the event handling mechanism or event-driven programming mechanism. For JavaScript, we use event loop as a single loop it's not in parallel. And in Qt package, they use signal and slot mechanism. And in Java virtual machine, we use this event delegation model. An event delegation model can be multi-threading. So when we click a button, it generates an action event. 
and sent to Java Virtual Machine. And that Java Virtual Machine add the event object to the event queue. And then Java Virtual Machine process it one by one. When it process it, it queue that event. And then find out the event type and then pass to the proper action handler. And because the button already associated with a certain action handler, that event got passed to that handler. So we start to process that event. And then we dequeue one by one for all the events in the event queue. This we call it event delegation model. So it's based on an event queue and doing the queue one by one. And this can be done in multi-threading environment. The delegation model, we have different view. This view is from the UML class diagram view. And user action trigger an event, and that is the event source class. The event source class can be the button, and the button also be associated with a certain listener. And the listener is of the X listener type. X can be mouse or action or something that we describe in the event object type. And that actually has a handler. And then the source button will be associated with a certain listener type. And that will be defined as the action listener and action performed with certain object type. And the detail processing is like the previous picture. Let's show you how the event delegation model works. Internal function of a source component. So an event trigger, that event is put into the event queue. And that event, when it queued by virtual machine, is sent to a certain listener. And that listener will be lining up according to the order. It will find a proper listener based on the event source. And the source button needs to be associated with certain listener. And here are the internal representation of the source and listener relationship. So one simple delegation model is like this. You create a button with the title like this. And then you create a listener by new OK listener. And then you associate that listener with the button. And selective event handler. Each event class could have several handler. For example, the action event will have only one handler action performed. An item event have only one handler as item states changed. But window event can have so many different handler because it can be opening or closed or iconified or deiconified or closed or activated or deactivated. Those depend on the window event objects are being sent out. And selected event handlers we also have the container event, mouse event. So container event has the component added. So when the component got added, you will get this event. And when mouse press on that container, but not a button, you will get the mouse event. And you need to use this mouse press the handler to handle it. Similarly for the mouse event, and mouse has press, release, click, and exit, and enter. And key event, you have press, release, and typed. And press, release, and type are of different event handler and handling different event. So that related to your key, when you press it, on the pressing action, you got an event. And when you release, that's another one. Type means that you have the whole word finished. So Java out the event, the action event. This is one of the event type. And then this event type inherit auth event type and odd event type inherit event object type. And this action event has the get action command method that will return the command string associated with this action. For example, the OK button or something like that. Text is the command string. And get modifier that will return the modifier key held down during this action event. And get when will give you a timestamp since the day January 1st, 1970. Let's look at the program control circle. And let's consider we write a program that uses two buttons to control the size of the circle. 
This control circle is a J frame. And in this frame, we have one enlarge button, one shrinking button, and one canvas. And canvas is actually a circle panel. And the circle panel is actually a J panel. So J panel actually will paint component. So that's the drawing part, the graphic. And the two button is down here, enlarge and shrink. So you, when you instantiate the control circle, we create one panel for the drawing part, and then we add the canvas into the frame, that's the canvas, the drawing part. We also add the panel one, and panel one has two buttons, enlarge and shrink, that's the panel one. So we add the pen one, and pen one has two buttons, enlarge and shrink. And that pen one are put at the border layout south. It's down here. And the canvas put in the center. That's upper here. And then both of the button has the enlarge and the shrink listener. So each one is listening right now. And the main function, we create a frame and set the size 200, so 200. That's it. And then for the string listener and the enlarge listener, we basically listen on the action event. When the button got clicked, you will either enlarge or shrink it. For the enlarge, you increase the radius and repaint. For shrinking, you decrease the radius and it must be positive number and repaint it. Let's run it. We click enlarge, it keep growing up. We click string, it keep lowering the radius of the circle. From here, I show you we add two events into the frame and associate them with the listener to the two buttons. And this add the behavioral model for the GUI that we designed. And these are different from the previous lectures. Those previous lecture only have structural information or drawing, but without the actions. Please download the program and try out yourself. Thank you.